Hello guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. Um, kind of a different video here today. I'm gonna tell you about something that happened over 60 years ago that is relevant to something that happened yesterday. And I had a dream when I was seven, eight years old uh, that was so real and just stuck with me over these years. For 60 years, I can still see parts of that dream as if it happened yesterday. Here's the dream. I'm laying in my bed at night, obviously, and the window opens up. And the window was different than the house th that I really had in the house. It was a window that opened up like that. So the window opens up, and in flies this fairy princess, whatever you want to call her. If you've ever seen Pinocchio, remember the, the fairy or the princess that was in there that made him a real boy? Um, she looks just like that. Blonde, white gown, beautiful. And so she flies into my room and she says, uh, come with me. And she takes my hand and just like in Peter Pan, we fly off into the night. And we fly and we fly and we fly and fly. We come to this place in the desert and we look down and we see all these dead sheep, hundreds of dead sheep. And she tells me that when you know what killed the sheep, and then after that, I don't remember what she said. I don't remember what I was supposed to know or have happened when I knew what killed the sheep. And I told my mother about this dream. I've talked about it over the years. It was just so real. So anyways, 40 years later, I end up living in St. George, Utah, about 100 miles north of Las Vegas. And while I'm there, one day I just happened to come across a newspaper article, an old newspaper article. And I'm reading this article and it talks about how back in the 1950s, the U.S. government was doing uh, atomic bomb tests in Nevada. And what they would do is they would wait until the wind was blowing north and they would have their test, the bomb would go off, all the radioactivity would blow away from Las Vegas and towards St. George, Utah, which I'm not sure what the population was then. Uh, probably, you know, just a few thousand people, I would imagine. When I lived there, when I first moved there in early 1990s, it was um, about 70,000 people. I lived, there, I lived there for 15 years, so I know the area really well. So do I read this article and it talks about how all these sheep were killed by radioactivity. I guess it landed in the grass or whatever, and the sheep ate it and they all died. And the government uh, refused to accept responsibility for it. And they even had a roadblock set up halfway between Vegas and St. George back then where they would pull cars over and check with a Geiger counter if they were radioactive they'd send them back to St. George, they wouldn't even let them go to Las Vegas. So all this was going on, you know, for real. So there's the answer to my dream. I know now what happened to these sheep. I know where it was, St. George, Utah. I know what killed the sheep. And, but I don't know what I'm supposed to know about, you know, once I find out what killed the sheep, I don't know what I'm supposed to, you know, be, find out or what's supposed to happen in my life or whatever. So anyway, um, here we go last night, over 60 years difference, and I'm randomly reading articles in Google um, as my wife's getting the baby to sleep, and I come across an article, you know, and it was about a movie that's being made, I think it was called Downwind, a documentary. And I'm reading the, the movie, about the movie, and it says it's about back in the 1950s, how the US government was doing atomic tests and radioactivity was blowing from Nevada into St. George, Utah, and how it killed all these sheep. So there it is again. And it just kind of gave me chills. And what it was supposed to mean, I don't know. All I was thinking is that the first time this revelation came to me, like I found out what killed the sheep, I was living in St. George, Utah, had my own business, I owned a roller skating rink at the time, and had two very small children. Or no, actually I had one daughter. My other daughter wasn't even born yet, so I had my one daughter. And so married one child, you know, basically a baby. And um, 
that's what was going on in my life. And also, you know, struggling with the business and all the stresses that go with being a young family. Um, and then now, here it is, you know, 60 years later, and I've got a baby and a wife again, so it's kind of like history repeating itself in a different way. Instead of having, you know, a business um, in Utah, I've got my YouTube channel, and so I guess that's some similarity, but I don't really know what it means, but it's just very bizarre that you dreamed about something when you were a child, didn't even know about nuclear we weapons and stuff when you were a kid, and you dream about something, and then later on, you find out that it really did happen. And it happened, you know, probably from when I had the dream. It wasn't that long ago. It was like that was in the 1960s, so it would have been in the 50s that this happened. Anyway, and so it's just about dreams. Um, when I was uh, in uh, Louisville, Kentucky, and uh, wasn't working on cruise ships, I was working as uh, associate producer of a radio show called the Dr. Stan Frager Show. And in that show, um, I interviewed a lot of people, and I interviewed some people on dreams. And there's all these different theories about dreams. But basically, there's, there's dreams that are just nonsense of yourself working over whatever happened in the day, just, you know, just nonsense dreams. And then there's symbolic dreams, like you dream of something, like say a spider, or a monkey, or a cow, or grass, green grass. And, all those different symbolic things mean different things. And there's a really good book um, on that that was written over 100 years ago that I've referred to from time to time, very accurate about uh, what different things mean when you see it in a dream. And then the rarest dreams at all are prophetic dreams, dreams where you see the future. Those are very, very rare, and I've had a few of those. And I'm going to tell you about one of those I had too. Um, I was working on my very first cruise ship was the Royal Viking Sky. And I just loved that ship. I mean, I had this great life there. My first time being out of the country and living on this ship and a great life, a great job as production stage manager. Everything's going wonderfully, wonderfully for me. Um, but I had a girlfriend back in New Mexico where I was living at the time. Kept begging me to come home, come home, and you know, and, and then she told me that um, she was working at a TV station. She worked for PM Magazine. And she said, well, you know, the stations, uh, you know, they knew who I was at down at the station. And they, um, he said, they're offering you a job at the TV station. Said, wow, you know, that'd be cool working at a TV station. And much as I love working on a cruise ship, maybe it'd be even better to work at a TV station. I think it was like camera operator or something like that. So anyway, I had a six month contract on the ship. I quit my, my job, quit early. You know, I left my contract like, you know, two months before it was up. And, the cruise director's talking to me, why do you want to do this? Why are you leaving? We really like you. You know, you're doing a great job. You got a great future with Royal Viking. And I'd worked so hard to get this job. I mean, really, really worked hard to get this job. I mean, I, I, I bugged this company for about a year and a half, sending them resumes every day or every month and calling them up on the phone and bugging them, bugging them, until they finally gave me a job. And then I quit the job, which is stupid. So anyways, um, quit the job, relationship with a girl, doesn't work out eventually and we break up and I keep thinking about that ship I go, God I sure wish I was still on that ship I never should have quit I never should have quit and I had this dream and this dream was just like the the dream about the sheep was so real it was as real as reality and on that ship they had two pools they had a big pool and a smaller pool the smaller pool was on one deck up from the big pool and the smaller pool if you were a staff you know say two stripes and above and it wasn't crowded, you were allowed to go down and use the pool, you know? You know, guests always came first, but if there wasn't a lot of people in there, you could use the pool. And so, I used to go to that pool all the time, especially when it was quiet. And so, in the dream, I'm back on the Royal Viking Sky, and I'm sitting in this pool, and we're at sea, and I'm, so we're facing the back of the ship, got my arms up on the side of the pool, just me alone in the pool, nobody else, and I'm just thinking, God, I'm so glad I'm back here on this ship. I am so happy I'm back on the Royal Viking Sky and I'll never leave this ship and I just love it here. And it was just a perfect day. I could see the people down below and the, the wake of the ship behind us as we're moving forward. And I was just so happy. And then of course I wake up, oh, it was just a dream. A Couple days later, I get a phone call from Royal Viking. Hey Mark, one of our guys quit suddenly. 
we're still pissed at you for, for leaving, quitting your contract, but I'd written him a letter and apologized and said, I really want to come back if it's at all, at all possible. I had you know, said, you know, it was a mistake that I left and everything, but I hadn't heard anything from him. And then all of a sudden he said, well, you know, we'll take you back on the Royal Viking Sky if you can, you know, be in wherever it was, I think somewhere in Spain. And so I got my job back and after I'd been there a week or two, I'm on the ship and I go up to that pool, I'm in that pool and it was exactly like the dream. Exactly. I'm there, sitting in the pool, nobody else around me but me, watching a sail, and it was exactly like the dream. 100% I saw the future. And so, you know, dreams are interesting. They're really interesting, you know, when, when sometimes, you know, you don't know what it means. Sometimes it means something, sometimes it doesn't. But just an interesting story. So have you got any uh, interesting dreams that you've had, especially things that have come true? Love to have you on the show and talk to you about it. Also, I'm still searching for anybody that's had a near-death experience. I've been watching a lot of videos about that lately, and I'm very interested in talking to anybody that's had a near-death experience, especially if you're willing to come on the show and share your, your story. Or if you've got a dream, like some bizarre dream that happened and came true. <clears throat> so anyway, that's it. You know, thank you for watching. Thanks for subscribing if you're a subscriber. If you share my videos with your friends, that really helps me out. I appreciate that. And that's it. We'll see you next time. Bye.